Um, so the specific findings are this particular fish that uh, our collaborators have been working on is a freshwater fish. It happens to be zebrafish, which is one of the genetic models that's even used here at Mayo Clinic for a variety of things, including some addiction research. In our particular case, though, the study focused on how these fish can get ions from their environment because fish, uh, like people, have blood and their blood has the same sort of ion concentrations that we have. But these fish live in fresh water, which hardly has any ions. So the big news in this study is that the transport systems in the gill of these fish are capable of pulling out just a few ions from fresh water and bringing them into the body of the fish. And so that was one of the major ahas of this particular study. And so people have wondered about this for several decades. And so we were finally able now with the advent of molecular cloning and stuff, we knew what the proteins were there, but we weren't sure if this protein that's normally found in epithelia in many different kinds of organisms, in the gut, in the kidney especially, uh, was able to work under such extreme circumstances because it goes a little bit of what we normally think about being the, the normal driving forces. So that was one thing that we were able to show. The other thing that's probably of more general interest to me as a medical researcher is that because the fish are in fresh water, there are a variety of other things that they produce because they make urine like you and I do, and so there's high ammonia and choline and other things in, in fresh water. And um, in the medical community, it's been known that one of the ways that our kidneys respond to high acid in your blood, because your blood pH is controlled, um, is to um, uh, get rid of extra acid and under certain circumstances make ammonia, and that's called ammonia genesis. That's partly under the control of the renin angiotensin system in our bodies. And so even though we know that the same protein is found in the mammalian kidney and the mammalian gut, and it's been hypothesized for, depending on who you talk to, somewhere between two and seven decades that this protein can do sodium ammonium exchange, it's never actually been demonstrated directly. And so in this study, we demonstrated it directly. So now we know how the kidney gets rid of ammonia uh, through this sodium transport system. And the other aspect of this is it may give some insight also into hypertension research because the renin angiotensin system is how our bodies control how much sodium is brought back into the blood. Understanding the nuances of how this protein is regulated by peptide hormones such as angiotensin, by other hormones such as aldosterone and how that controls the overall sodium in the body, the volume of our blood, that regulates blood pressure, hypertension, and so this leads to cardiovascular disease. And so it gives us a better handle on understanding how the kidney contributes to regulating pressure and salt. If this process is upset, uh, people end up with edema called pitting edema. So it's where, you know, water starts to pool in various tissues and they swell up. And so again, by knowing how these very basic things in certain cells are controlled, then we can understand how to turn them on and off if we need to with various medications to cause this not to happen. If the protein is not functioning appropriately, even though the hormonal systems may be functioning appropriately, again, the wrong thing happens. Either too much or too little salt is brought back in and people end up being hypertensive or hypotensive. And so it's all part of the whole system physiology of our bodies and how one organ communicates with the other organs to keep everything in control and where it's supposed to be in the normal state.